Hi, and welcome to your 25th iOS programming tutorial. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to pass data between views in iOS using Xcode and Objective-C. This is a really useful skill, and today I'm going to be showing you in our specific application, we'll have two view controllers, and one will have a text field where the user enters text, and one will have a label. When the user enters some text and clicks the next button, it will take them to the new view controller and the label will suddenly be populated with the text which they entered in the first view controller. This can be applied to anything from uploading an image on one view controller and displaying it in another view controller to numbers and text. So, let's get started. Open up Xcode and create a new Xcode project. For this tutorial it doesn't matter whether you are creating a single view, tab bar application and so on. And I'm just going to call this passing data, but you can call yours whatever you want. There's a number of ways of passing data between views in iOS, and this is just one of them, and I will do other videos on various other ways. I found this to be the most reliable and simplest way of passing data between views, as it requires very little code, and doesn't require much on either view controller's part, nor does it require any sort of special type of view controller. So we're going to start in our storyboard today, and we need to create two view controllers. So we've got our default first view controller. And in case you haven't been uh, creating more than one view controller for your apps, uh, I suggest you do watch the second iOS programming tutorial where I, or the first, where I show you, can't remember. Where I, anyway, in that tutorial I do show you how to do segues between views, and a segue is essentially changing view. So if I wanted to go from this view to this view, I'd do a segue from the button when it's clicked to this view. Anyway, you don't need to know that because I'll be showing you right now. So let's add a text view on our first view controller. And then we also are going to add a continue button. So just drag a button below the text field and I'll just call this continue. Now on our next view controller, well let's add a label in the middle of the screen. I'm going to make this label a bit bigger, because the user may enter a lot of text, and center it, and add more than one line. Now, before we continue, we need to create a new view controller class for this second view controller. What you'll notice is we have viewcontroller.h and .m, however, we don't have a second view controller.h and .m, and we do need to set up some code to change the text of the label in our second view controller. So to do that, simply hit Command N, and then Objective C class, and then click Next. And we need to make sure it's a subclass of UI View Controller because this is a UI View Controller, and we'll call it Second View Controller. Make sure both of these boxes are unticked, unless you are using XIBs. Then click Create. Don't change the location where it's going to be saved, as it will by default save into your our application or your projects folder on your computer, so you don't want to mess that up. Hit Command B to make sure that it's all compiled properly, and then on your first view controller, if you click on the newspaper icon in your attributes inspector, if you can't see that, click on the top right corner button, and you'll see that it, the class is set to view controller. If you select the second one and make sure the blue it's highlighted in blue, if you don't see that click on the black box at the bottom of the view controller. Anyway, you'll see that the class doesn't have it, uh, well, there is no class. It's got a placeholder text for UI view controller. So let's set the second view controller, which is what we just created. So start typing second view controller. Don't worry, type ahead doesn't come up. Just type it in manually. For me, it has. There are a few bugs in Xcode, so sometimes it may not. And then let's click enter. Now we need to add a segue between our views, as you would when you change views. As always, it's just going to be a modal action segue. But now, unlike usual, we do need to set some properties. So click on the segue, click on the circle, and then go back into the properties, and we need to set an identifier. Well, we don't need to, but it'll make it a lot easier. So let's click on, we'll call the identifier continue. You can call it whatever you want, and normally you probably don't set an identifier for your segues. Although in this case we do, because what we'll do is we will go, if there's about to be a segue, let's get ready to do the segue, and then once we're ready to do the segue, let's make sure that it's the right segue, because there might be multiple segues. So we'll go if the identifier is continuing, well then it's definitely this segue. 
Anyway, let's keep moving. So, click on the first view controller. And we'll go into our assistant editor by clicking on the tuxedo icon. I'm just going to make a bit more room. Make sure it's set to automatic and view controller dot H. Then we need to set up some outlets. Well, only one outlet actually. That's all we need to set up. So, right click and then drag from the text field in between the at interface and at end lines. Now inside here, make sure the connection is outlet, text field, and strong. And I'm just going to call this outlet text field. Now we need to set this label as a property of our second view controller. So click on the label and because we're set to automatic, our assistant editor automatically goes to second view controller dot M. We need once again need to go back to second view controller dot H and then right click and drag it on the label and put it between at interface and at end. It's very important and I'll quickly show you what you could do here that you don't do curly brackets and then put it inside the curly brackets as you may usually do as we actually need to be able to get a general property and I'll show you that in a moment. So right click and drag on the label and drag it in between add interface and at end just call it label and make sure all of those properties are the same on your computer and as you'll see there's an app property that's been created you might be used to seeing something like this and just seeing this here and not seeing all this app property but for this particular uh, concept we do need to use properties so that we can get the data from one view to the other essentially what that allows us to do is go second view controller dot label and that will get the label of the second view controller it's not only a local variable as it would be if you included it within at interface now we can start doing all the coding so let's go to view controller dot m and we need to first import our second view controller so go hashtag import second view controller dot h not dot m now we need to create a new method we don't, we're not going to trigger a method when the button's clicked. We're going to trigger a method when there is about to be a segue. To do that, in between, uh, underneath view, void, view, did load, type dash void, prepare for segue. Segue and sender. So when we're about to do a segue, so when the user clicks that button, there's, a, there's going to be a segue. So as the user clicks that button, ev all the code that we put inside this method here is going to run. So let's first go, if, square bracket, segue dot identifier is equal to string at talking mark talking mark continue and I'll run through all this code in a moment then what we need to do is type second view controller and um, we'll just go star controller equals and then we type in uh, circular brackets or just normal brackets final uh, sorry second view controller asterisk and I'm just going to close my assistant editor quickly asterisk and then segue dot destination view controller and then add a semicolon now all we need to do is go controller dot label and that's the label that we set in our second view controller dot h so as you can see we can now access that controller dot label dot text equals and then we can go self dot text field dot text now that's actually not going to work and I'll show you in a moment why that is let's try running the application and you'll see that nothing happens when we click the next button well the segue happens but the label doesn't get any text I'll explain why in a moment sometimes it might receive the text but it's not a very secure way of uh, doing the code and so we're going to change it in a moment so let's add some text into our text field hello world continue and as you can see our label's got no text what we need to do is set uh, rather than setting the text of a label of our second view controller we need to set the content of a string and then in our second view controller and view did load then we'll set our labels text to be that string the reason it can't happen the other way around is that when we say here controller.label.text that label doesn't yet exist, it's not yet created, we need to wait until view did load in our second view controller to be able to access it. Let's go into our second view controller dot h 
and copy this line here at property. Get rid of the text IB outlet and change UI label to NS string and we'll change it to text content. Now go back into view controller and change label.text to text content. Then in our second view controller.m in view to load, let's try typing self dot label dot text equals self dot and then text content and then semicolon now try running your build this time it should work hello world continue as you can see our labels text now says hello world let's try running it again with some different text and make sure it still works i am now typing some different text continue I'm now typing some different text. So, what we've managed to do is we've managed to get data from one view controller and pass it on to another view controller. This is a very basic example, but the same principles apply. Let me explain why. I'll first explain the code to clear things up a bit. So as I said, this method here is called when there's about to be a segue. So we're saying, okay, so there's about to be a segue. If the segue's identifier is continue, so let's go into our storyboard, and you can see that if I click on the segue, you can see that we've set its identifier to be continue. So, if it is continue, which it is, then let's run all of this code here. So the first thing we're doing is going second view controller, which is the other view controller. And if for some reason you're getting an error there, make sure you've imported it up here, underneath import view controller.h, and is the .h file that you've imported. So second view controller, we'll just call it controller. That's essentially what we're writing here, to keep things simpler. We're pretty much creating an instance variable, or just a variable, like how you will create an NS string. Then we're saying that equals segue.destination view controller. Now, we don't actually need this code here. Look what happens if I delete it though. Well, nothing, but you can get warnings. The reason we're putting that there is we're essentially going, the segue's destination view controller is definitely the second view controller. So don't give me a warning saying that second that the segways destination view controller may be third view controller because it's not we're third and it's second view controller so we're casting the segway destination view controller to be second view controller so all we're, all we're doing here is saying we're cr pretty much creating a variable called controller which is our second view controller then we're saying controller text content if we go into our second view controller dot h we can see we've created our property text content so we're saying text content which is just a string Make that equal to another string, what string? Well, here I could just add a string like that. But instead I'm going self, which is for this just view controller. The reason I'm typing self rather than just saying text field is because I did not do inside curly brackets, you IB outlet UI text field and so on. Although for this first view controller, I could have done that and it would have worked. So anyway, all I'm saying is get the text from the text field. So second view controller, set the NS string, your NS string, to be the content of my text field. So the second view controller is going, okay, and so then when prepare for segue is finished, so when all of this code is done, it's going to perform the segue to second view controller. So now we're in second view controller, so second view controller is going, okay, and it would name name all of that, and then it's going, okay, now I need to load the view. So it's going self.label.text, so the, t the labels text of the second view, what should that, what should the text be? Well, let's make it a second view controller or self because when second view controller so self pretty much just means second view controller self dot text content which is just this ns string text content and it already has a value because when we prepared for the segue we set the value now we can do this with anything not just ns strings for example i can change this to be an ns integer or number and then in view controller dot m i can go controller dot text content equals and then I'm getting a warning because that's an NS string and text content is now a number. So if I set 4, then that, that would work too. And that could be a UI image. So I might have an image picker here or a camera, a custom camera view. So the user takes a photo and I now want to display that photo in a custom view controller. Now I could just have a million image views and views laid onto the one view controller, but that gets very complex. I could use NS user defaults and save the data and then load the data. But that's a bit risky because if for some reason the camera didn't work, there'd still be data even though there actually no photo was taken. So I could just take the photo and then I could go uh, view image view controller for example 
dot image equals and then the image the camera just took and then I could display it and view did load so self dot image view dot image equals and then the name of the image view it works with literally anything and that's why this is such a great way of passing data between views if for some reason you're having problems doing this or you have any questions message us directly through YouTube get in touch with us on our website 99centsappdevelopment.com or message us on Facebook no, facebook.com forward slash 99 cents app development or comment on this video be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time